from Gastro Office. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk about constipation for a few minutes. Just talk about the types of constipation, what treatment options there are, and what's our workup here at Gastro Office. So the first thing I tell people is that usually I think of constipation as two types. The first type is slow transit constipation. Simply put, things are not moving as fast as they should. And when this happens, patients experience bloating, cramping, abdominal fullness, and even nausea. And so the treatment for this is typically laxatives. And a lot of this is over the counter. So you'll see an entire aisle dedicated in, in most stores just for laxatives. Now, there are three types of laxatives, and I want to just mention them briefly so that when you go to the store, you kind of know what to expect. The first one are osmotic laxatives, and that includes polyethylene glycol, Miralax, Clearlax. There's so many derivatives of this. Essentially, it brings in water and electrolytes into the lumen. So you mix this powder in you know, any solution, you drink it, uh, and it hopefully moves things through a little quicker. The second type is stimulant laxatives. So this is uh, things like Senecot, Bisicodal, uh, and what this typically does is that it actually helps with the prokinetics or the promotility of the colon. So it kind of moves things through, you know, with the peristalsis. And then finally, the last one is surfactants. So this is kind of like docusate. I think of this as kind of, you know, the oil water uh, resistance in stool. It allows for more water and fat to get into the stool. And so it's kind of giving more girth to the stool. So those are the three types of laxatives. And usually most patients do just fine uh, with th these, you know, uh, options. Now, there are newer agents, especially in the last decade, there's been a lot of advancements and there are pill forms uh, of therapy uh, and they work on specific channels as well. Uh, before we get into all of that, you know, those, those are things that where, you know, you really have to show that you failed at other options uh, first, especially the laxatives. Um, before we get to those kind of options, I typically talk about the other type of constipation, which is pelvic floor dysfunction. And so pelvic floor dysfunction, uh, most patients with that, you know, they have symptoms of incomplete emptying at time of having a bowel movement. They'll get up and then they feel like they have urgency to go right away again. They're um, straining quite a bit on the stool, on the toilet. Um, they also, when they wipe, have a lot of stool remaining. Uh, they also can have similar symptoms of bloating, uh, cramping, discomfort as well. Uh, but these patients typically tend to go almost every day. They just don't realize that they are constipated because uh, things aren't emptying well. And the way that you look for pelvic floor dysfunction or dyssynergia is that uh, we can actually do something called manometry in the office where we actually measure pressures. I just wanted to take a moment and show you some pictures and explain what that is exactly. Uh, so here, if you look at this here, uh, this is kind of a cross section of your bottom. Uh, up top, you can kind of see this is the rectum uh, and this is the last six inches of your colon. So it plays a really important role of storing all of that stool before you're ready to have a bowel movement. Uh, and then here you can see that there's the anal canal right here, and you have your internal and external sphincters. Uh, and they're really important to keep you from having incontinence or you know, soiling yourself. So what happens during a bowel movement is that you know, the rectum is actually kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, covered by a lot of pelvic floor muscles. They almost uh, make a sling around the rectum, especially the pubo-rectalis muscle. And what happens is when you engage your core to have a bowel movement, the rectum elongates, it increases the pressure, and you move stool out. And at the same time, the anal canal should also relax. And if this does not happen correctly, you can have pelvic floor dysfunction. And so a very simple way to think about it is, is that if the pressure is lower in the rectum than in the anal canal, you can't move stool through. And so you're not able to have a good bowel movement. And so, you know, a lot of those symptoms I was talking about, like the straining, incomplete emptying, stool when you wipe, um, a lot of those things can be measured as well, right? And so um, the way that we typically do this uh, is that we have you come to the office. You don't require any preparation. We just ask you have a bowel movement beforehand. Um, we get you onto your left side and we're able to actually uh, place a catheter probe. I'm going to show it to you. Don't uh, be too nervous about the, the length of it. It's only about six inches that enters the rectum. It's a third of my pinky size, so it's very small, okay? Um, and, you know, if you look closely here, you can kind of see there are measurements on here. And so there, there's a balloon here, and then there's actually pressure monitors here that we connect to our system and our software. 
And once this is inserted, uh, it literally takes five seconds to insert. Uh, once the device is inserted, I'll have you squeeze down. And again, uh, when you think about the picture I'm looking at to make sure your, um, you know, your internal external sphincters are, are working appropriately. And then we'll actually have you push the balloon out, you know, and we'll, we're looking at the pressures in the rectum compared to the anal canal. Uh, once that's done, I take a look and, you know, we evaluate all the numbers. And if you truly do have pelvic floor dysfunction, a lot of these laxatives like Miralax or, you know, Senna, Docusate, a lot of these are uh, not, they're just temporary band-aids, right? Because they're just moving things through, but the last six inches of your colon or the rectum is not adequately emptying stool. And so the treatment for this is actually pelvic floor physical therapy. Now, you know, the last thing is a lot of people say, hey, what about a colonoscopy? You know, is it required for constipation evaluation? And well, you know, certainly if there's a change in your bowel habits or you have bleeding, unintentional weight loss, anemia, you know, we definitely should be thinking about a colonoscopy. Uh, it's not always required as the first line, but that's something we always think about, you know, towards the end of the workup. If, you know, if we don't feel like you have pelvic floor dysfunction, you failed a couple of rounds of laxatives, we've even tried the oral pills that I had mentioned earlier. Um, all of those things, you know, would then ultimately can have us consider a colonoscopy. So, you know, the big thing about constipation is how do you go about this and how do you treat it? You know, first thing I would recommend is just a simple laxative. If that's not doing justice, you know, evaluate how you're pooping. And, you know, really if you're straining or you're not emptying well, that's something to come in and talk to us about a manometry exam. Uh, and then the last thing is, is just, you know, oral agents as well. Uh, Linza, Samatiza, Trulicity, Prucalopride, there's a lot of options now that we can talk about.